Hello, this is Lori Michelle with Mashiach's Life Lesson number 19. The Paradox of Life, Part 2. God gives us free will and determines everything. That doesn't sound like free will, does it? But it is. He gives us a choice in every moment. The choice is between a desirable choice, goodness, or evil. And the word evil sounds very extreme to most people, doesn't it? The evil inclination, Satan. It sounds like you're just a crazy Bible-toting Puritan. There's nothing evil about going on a date and having a little fun, if you know what I mean. And it is evil if it's inappropriate contact with the opposite sex, it's evil. It's wrong. It's against the desirable choice of goodness in God. He gave us a set of rules not to be an overbearing control freak that wants to control you. He's not that at all. As a matter of fact, he gives you carte blanche and freedom all over the world. You have freedom and so does everyone else. And all you have to do is look around the world and see the mess that we're in. And he's given us free will and freedom to choose. You want to use fossil fuel? Go for it. Now we have a giant hole in the ozone and we have climate change. And we have pollution, air pollution, water pollution. We have a garbage crisis. We have a giant island of trash and plastic in the Pacific. Have you read about this? The barrier reef is dying. That's free will. And you might say, I didn't do any of that. He just said just now, oh yes, you did. I don't care if you're a scientist and an environmentalist and you are working very hard to mitigate the climate change and reverse it and change the world for the better. That's good, but guess what? That's one problem. We have many problems. That's climate change and pollution and the environment. What about cancer? What about suicide? What about sexually transmitted diseases? I can go on and on and on the slippery slope that led us to hell. The choices, the free will choices that humans have made for thousands of years. And he stood back and he said, free will, you choose, you get what you choose. You want to smoke cigarettes? Okay, now you have cancer and emphysema and all kinds of problems. You choose, and this is what you get. And right now, we have a disaster everywhere we turn. And you might say, well, my life's pretty good. And you're just a doomsdayer and a naysayer and a Bible-toting freak. And no, I'm not. You know what I am? I'm a messenger and a teacher, and I'm talking to him. And he said, this is Mashiach. And you may not believe that, but guess what? You have free will to choose. Now, how are you going to do that? Do you have enough information about me to make a decision about me? No, you don't. If you read my book, and I hope you will, and use your free will to investigate, you'll find out that I am all about you, and I don't even care about the title of Mashiach. If you want to be Mashiach, I'll work for you. Go for it. Come on. Let's heal the world. That's what I'm in it for. I'm not in this for me. That choice is godly and goodness. And if you don't want me and you don't like me, it's all about you and what you want. All I want is peace and health and prosperity for everyone. What do you want?
you want it to come from who you want it from, right? That's a choice. And guess what that choice is? Because it's all about you and what you want. And I don't want to listen to you. I don't like you. Well, why don't you like me? If all I want to do is help you and teach you and share him with you, what's wrong with me for you? You don't like what I look like. You don't like that I'm a Jew. You don't like that I'm from Israel, apartheid Israel. Or maybe you think that it's all about you and that I'm trying to steal your thunder. No, I'm not. I'm trying to give you everything. So evil, you get to choose in every moment. And he decides, he determines everything. There are no accidents. Just yesterday, he showed me an ATM. This is not a little story. This is a big story to show you what it's like to travel with the king of the universe and he gives you a clue. So he gave me a clue yesterday. He showed me an ATM that converts dollars to shekel. I'm in Israel and those ATMs are not all over the place. You can't use an American debit card everywhere. So he showed it to me and he said, look, Lori, look what's over there. I said, oh, look at that. Thank you, Hashem. I'll remember that's there if I ever need it. Lo and behold, this morning, I went on my normal run. I brought my American debit card. I needed cash. And I went to my normal ATM that I always go to that always gives me money. And this morning it said, we cannot accept this card. Please check with your service provider. My service provider, what's wrong with my card? There's money on this card. What's going on? And Hashem reminded me, I showed you yesterday, Lori, there's an ATM right down the block. Let's go try it. Lo and behold, I had cash this morning. So what was that? A lucky break? If it were you, you would have maybe noticed the ATM. And this morning you may have had problems at an ATM. And then you would remember, lucky break. I remember there's another ATM down the block. I'm so lucky happenstance, right? Not at all. If you travel with him the way I do, and you speak to him the way I do, you know that everything is deliberate and on purpose and on time, precise. A couple of days ago, I was in Haifa and I was panicking that I couldn't find a bus to get home. My phone app said the next bus was in an hour and a half. And he said to me, Lori, go ask that man about a bus to your hometown. I went to the window and the man behind the glass pointed and said, there's your bus waiting for me. My app said an hour and a half. Why was a bus waiting for me? Lucky break, happenstance. I happened to get there at the right moment. No, it was him. I sat in the bus. I put my head in my hands and I said, thank you, Hashem. Every time I go to an ATM without exception and I get any amount of money, I say, thank you, Hashem. It all comes from him. He determines everything. But people around the world have forgotten. Even the rabbis don't know how involved he is with everything, every word that's uttered, everything that happens around you. Do you have free will? Of course you do. And he watches and he waits. And if he loves you, he intervenes. And a bus is waiting for you when you need it. Lucky? Lucky Lori? No, I'm not lucky at all. I am blessed by the king of the universe. If you check my name and the numbers 
the, the matria behind my name and a specific date that something's supposed to happen and everything seems to line up and wow, that can't be an accident. It was pre-planned with your birth date and your name and it all happened on time and it was predetermined. So there's no free will. You just showed up and it happened the way it was supposed to. And he said, no, it doesn't. Because in between, you must choose. And he says there are many variables, meaning on any given day, anything can happen. And the gematria and all the numbers and all the Bible code seems to fall into place when it actually does occur but there are many opportunities for that to happen. And he's watching and guiding and pushing and shoving. And yesterday or two days ago, he lifted me up out of my seat in Jerusalem in the bus station and thrust me on a bus that I didn't want to be on. He will intervene when he wants to, when he must, when there's a desired outcome that he determines must happen. So these are the end of days and he's calling in all the marbles and he's not leaving a lot up to your free will, yet you still have it right to the end, right to the end of your life, you get to choose. And then he determines what will happen to you. So what's going to happen to you? He already knows, but you still have to choose it. It's a paradox, really, but you do have free will. You must learn to choose God and goodness in every moment, or he determines you don't belong here anymore. And so you might say, well, that's not free will. Well, why the heck would you want to be evil? That's what I want to know. Why the heck would you want to be contrary to his wishes when all he wants is love, peace, health, prosperity, and joy for you and for everyone? Why would you determine that you need to be able to choose the opposite? And up until now, in the end of days, you've had your free reign and look at the putrid mess we're in. You've all done it. Everyone has done it and it's time to wake up. You're being judged right now, right in this second. If you bother to watch this far, he's watching your every move and he's determining what will happen to you next. What will happen to your children? What will happen to your spouse? What is going to happen to you, Ginger? Arman. I don't know what your name is. I don't know where you're from, but I'm betting that there's goodness in you. I'm betting that you want a world that is peaceful and everyone is healthy and we get to live eternally in joy and peace. I'm betting that you are included in that desire. So if you want if you want more goodness and godliness in this world, don't hesitate anymore because I'm telling the truth. It's time. Wake up. Free will, you got it. What are you going to do with it?